Okay, so there's two reasons why you might be watching this particular video. Eh, three, I suppose, but from my perspective, mostly two. One, you missed the class when we did it in class. Two, you're a little fuzzy on it and you need to go back and have a look. Uh, either way, this video is, let's call it optional, based on whether or not you were caught the stuff in class. So if you need to watch it because you missed it or because you're a little bit fuzzy on it, awesome. Otherwise, no requirement for you to watch it. Uh, I do nomenclature over several uh, days, and I do it in a, what I always call layers. So this will be layer number one and layer two, but they're always taught in the same lesson. And we're going to be covering off uh, elements in what I call simple metal, non-metal nomenclature. So let's start with the metal, the elements rather. Um, the main thing you need to remember with, with the elements is that spelling counts. I mean, you like it when people spell your name correctly, the elements, we're going to spell their names correctly. And now, in most cases, that's not a problem. There are a few, though, where the spelling gets kind of mixed up because most English words have different letter combinations. So fluorine, uh, the U comes before the O, which is a little unusual in a lot of English words. Phosphorus just ends with a U-S, not an O-U-S. And actually, O-U-S with phosphorus would kind of mean something else that we're not going to get into today. Sulfur, uh, you'll sometimes see it spelled with an F. You'll sometimes see it spelled with a P-H, more often with an F but always with ending with an e, uh, the uh, U-R sound that makes the er sound, on, uh, sorry, where most English words it would end with U-E-R. Uh, but those are the big ones for spelling. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of other ones that could easily be spelled wrong, but those are the ones that probably are going to cause the most grief. Sometimes symbols get mixed up. If you look through the periodic table, you'll notice that a lot of symbols make some sense because the first letter of the name and the first couple letters of the element work together. But there are some that are based, where the symbol is based on a name from a different language other than English. Who would have thunk? But in those cases, the symbols and the names don't really have an obvious connection. How about, how, sorry, however, um, sodium starts with an S in English. There's another element on the periodic table that has an S, and sometimes people will use that. They'll kind of get it mixed up. However, if you have a periodic table with the names, there's no excuse, and after having done some nomenclature, you'll get used to the symbols and what they are, so once you don't have the periodic table with the names, shouldn't be a problem. But just tuck it in the back of your mind as things to be aware of. The second most important thing to remember with elements is that there are some elements that exist differently from how they appear on the periodic table. And we call those ones diatomic. And those are elements where they form a two-atom molecule. They go around as that small cluster of atoms. Now, having said that, there are other elements that can go around as a cluster, but they don't always. So we're going to, in most cases, ignore the cluster possibility because sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. These elements always do. So we're going to learn those. And there are seven that we need to worry about, we need to care about, we need to pay attention to. And there are these seven here. Anytime you see any one of these elements in their pure state, so just oxygen or just nitrogen, you will write it down as the diatomic form. Once it forms a compound, so if oxygen, for example, is in a compound, if chlorine is in a compound, then the diatomic stuff doesn't matter. But when it's all by itself as an element, the diatomic stuff absolutely matters. That takes care of about all we really need to pay attention to for elements, so we're going to move on to simple metal, non-metal nomenclature. Now, the simple is because the nomenclature is simple, but I need to caution you, when we move on to other layers, the stuff that we're learning now will always apply to what we're learning now, but not apply to stuff that we learn later. So one of the things about nomenclature is that every time we add new stuff, we have more things to keep track of. So this type of nomenclature only applies to certain metals, and we're going to point those out on the periodic table. It will apply to all the non-metals, but we're kind of working our way through with metals. When we write the nomenclature, the metal always goes first, 
and it will always take a positive charge. Now we may or may not have talked about how that positive charge comes about. We'll get to it eventually. For right now, we'll just tell you what the po positive charges are, and then we'll work with that. The non-metal always takes the negative charge, and obviously it's going to be written second. Now if you have a periodic table, then, and you have it labeled, it should look a little bit like this. If you don't have it labeled, you can label it. If you don't have a periodic table, check where you found the video. There should be a link to a periodic table. If there's not, either I forgot or you found it somewhere different. But in the group one, always plus one. Now I like to say that always plus one in compounds because if I had sodium all by itself, element number 11 in group one, sodium as an element does not have a plus one charge, only when it forms a compound. Group two elements, metals rather, uh, form plus two compounds, or they become plus two when they form compounds. Group 13, and yeah, you know what, group 13, I'm only gonna ever use uh, those two that I've indicated, so after that I've stopped bothering my coloring. There are a few other elements that are kind of scattered around on the periodic table that for us, we're gonna pay attention to. There are probably a few others on the periodic table that could fit into this category, but we're not going to use them. I never use them in, in class in nomenclature questions, so I have not included them. But they're those ones there. If that's a little bit small for you to be seen, uh, check with me in class and I'll, we'll, we'll work through the bigger versions. And then of course the non-metals. And the non-metals, group 17 is always minus one with metals. Group 16 always minus two with metals. Group 15 always minus 3 with metals. Now you'll notice I said something different. It's not in compounds, it's with metals. Because it's possible for a non-metal to get together with another non-metal, they're not going to do the same kind of thing. All right, how do we name compounds? Well, naming compounds, all we really have to do is get our order correct, which is pretty easy, and then change the ending of the non-metal to IDE. So, in other words, if nitrogen is the non-metal, nitride. If bromine is the non-metal, bromide. And that's it. Well, a couple of examples. I've got sodium with oxygen. Don't worry about what the little numbers mean. Uh, it means, so it, we'll call it sodium oxide. The numbers, a the little number there, does not show up in anywhere in the name. If you have strontium and chlorine, sorry, that scandium and chlorine, then it'll be scandium chloride. All I did was stuck them together, said what the elements were, changed the ending. When you're writing formulas, now we have to come up with the little numbers. So at that point, this becomes the most important rule, is that the total positive charge equals the total negative charge. Now again, we may not have talked about what that charge means, or where it comes from, but we know what the charges are. So aluminum oxide, no little numbers in the name, because why would there be? But I have to come up with the little numbers. I know from the periodic table that aluminum is plus three in compounds, and oxygen is minus two with metals. So I just make sure that the totals are the same. I cannot change the numbers, but I can make sure that they balance out. So one way to do it is this table. Nobody ever uses this table, but it's a nice way to look through it and make sure we see what's going on. I had to increase, have more negative charge, so I brought in another oxygen. That tipped the balance, so now I don't have enough positive charge, which tips the balance, so I don't have enough negative charge. But if I bring in one more oxygen, so I have a total of three oxygens, two aluminums, now I have a total of plus six and a total of negative six. Total positive charge is the same as total negative charge. My compound is going to balance out to be that. Aluminum oxide, two aluminums, three oxygens. Now I said nobody uses that table. What we end up doing is if you look at the previous example and how the numbers ended up working with each other, we ended up, or we could have done something called a crossover. Uh, so we're going to follow that with germanium oxide. Now I have crossover and reduce, and that's really, really important. Germanium is plus four with, uh, sorry, in compounds, and oxygen is minus two with metals. So if I take the numbers of the charge, not the sign, I don't take the plus, I don't take the minus, I just take the number, the size of it, and I cross that over, then I end up with this. Now that would give me 
a balance between the total positive and the total negative. But I want to write this formula in its lowest reduced form, lowest ratio. So I reduce it to this, germanium oxide. That's the correct thing. Now that's a whole lot quicker. I like the table because it kind of shows you why we're doing the crossover. The crossover isn't a magic trick. It's getting us a quick way to the, um, the total charges being the same, but then I have to pay attention to see if I can reduce it to a lower ratio. Okay, a couple final comments, things that we need to be paying attention to, uh, maybe not quite back of the mind things. Make sure you watch the spelling. Yes, spelling counts. Um, eventually, you will not have a periodic table with the names, but you will always have a periodic table. And it only applies to the stuff that we're talking about in with, uh, on, sorry, this only applies to the metals that we've uh, indicated on the periodic table, those groups or those other five. And then next time we'll move on to other ones. But hopefully this helped.